All right. Shun, Shun, copyright. Hi guys, and welcome to a new episode on this channel. Today we will be talking about all the three books of the Pachinko series combined. Now, in my last three episodes, some of my other three episodes, we have been talking all about the Go Young Hometown Book One and the Motherland Book Two, and then Pachinko. Now, each of these, all of these books combined, start from nineteen ten. To 1989, to 1989, which is when the colonizations ended, for 54 years later. Now, let's get started on the action. First, we have to start in Goyang, the hometown. This part talks a lot about its time in the colonizations, in between the colonizations, from 1910 to 1933. While, uh, while the colonization happened from 1910 to 1945, and it lasted for 35 years. That is a lot, if you ask me. And this is from Goyang, the hometown. So, all right. First of all, we have to focus on parts of the family tree only. Only parts. This is the whole family tree, and let's get started. All right. First of all, there's Huni's father and mother. There's Huni's father and mother, and then they they made Huni, and then, and then they got Sunja, I'm sorry, Yang Jin's mother, Yang Jin's father and mother, and then they got married. Huni and Yang Jin got married, and then they reproduced Sunja. Sunja was their only child. Who survived? Sunja then considered marrying Hansu, but he already married to his mistress. So she was like angry, but they accidentally have sex before she knew this, and so they got Noah. However, he got the name of Sunja of Sunja's real husband, Big Isak. So they married, and then they got Mozasu. When Mozasu was old enough to work, Goro, a boss for Mozasu, became his boss. Now, Mozasu did not happen later in book two, but for now, let's put them all into one. There is no book series in this for now. Mozasu, Mozasu, then marries Yumi, marries Yumi, and they get Solomon, who loves reading Ultraman comics. Ultraman! I used to be a big fan of Ultraman. And then Solomon. Married was thinking of marrying Phoebe, who was a Korean, and she but she lived in the States, and every day yeah, she ate the wonders of the United States of America: Kentucky Fried Chicken, French fries, McDonald's, every type of American food. By the way, I really like American food because I really been to America myself, and breakfast, lunch, dinner were all so yummy. I still think about that chocolate restaurant, so. By the way, that's the pleasures that Phoebe had, and uh, yeah, that's where the book ends. That's where the book ends. Hans Noah suicided himself. Hansu kind of went away, never seen to be again until book three. And um, yeah, that's how the book ends. H- Huni died. Yang Jin was still alive. Sunja was still alive. Uh, Beck. Beg Yus- oh, by the way, Beg Isak has a brother named Beg Yusef who married Kilmi. Beg Yusef died. Beg Isak died before Beg Yusef, even though Beg Isak is younger. And a lot of family members die. First of all, there's Huni, the father. Huni died. Then Hansu and his mistress kind of died. Beg Isak died. Uh, Beg Yusef died. Mm. Noah died. Noah died. Yumi was. Was accidentally killed by a taxi driver who slept while he was, while he was trying to, well, drive. Uh, yeah, that's about it. Six people died in the whole series. About six people died in the whole series, and a lot of tragedy happened here. And I still can't believe how we got into this family member mess up. This whole series ends with these last words: Kyung Hee will be waiting for her, for Sunja at home. And then, and I mentioned in my last episode on Pachinko, I said that this try to write your own endings in the comments below since Pachinko ended with an open ending. Well, at least that's what I think. So yeah, try to try to fit in another story behind them, or try to even write a whole novel. But I guess YouTube won't allow you to. So yeah, try it. 
Now, why? Now, let's get into some reasons of these. Why was Pachinko called Pachinko? Well, why was Pachinko called Pachinko? Well, it's because it's because that, like Minjin Lee said, that she that she wrote the book. Um, first thought that the book should be named Motherland, but then. She worked at a pachinko parlor, and then she interviewed loads of families who, spatters, uncles, and everybody else there, all worked at a pachinko history. Has some pachinko history, like, well, a lot of pachinko people are here. So she decided to put the name pachinko, which a lot of people, Americans don't know. It's like gambling version of, of the Jap- Japanese gambling version. Yeah, like that. And there's a lot of things that happen right after. And now, how the story plot happened? Min Jin Lee was living in the world of during this、uh, colonization of Japan, and during the time when North Korea and South Korea split apart. And、uh, she she also said that she never saw some of her family members forever. And yeah, there's kind of the same plot for all of these books. Kind of when I noticed it. And why she wrote this book? Well, I don't want her that there were loads of types of Koreans in the world that a lot of Europeans, Americans, all those people never knew about. And yeah, so that's one of the reasons that she wrote the Pachinko book. No, no singular, just plurals. And that's exactly what I mean by here. And yeah, no one did go to Wasetta, and I wonder why she did put Wasetta in here. Now, what are your reasons why no one wants to go to Waseda? Write them in the comments below. Yeah, write them. Write them. So yeah. Now that's basically it. I'm gonna talk about the book for now. And well, my reasons why I think Min Jin Lee wrote Pachinko is because of her life, to see the struggles of her life, and. To tell others, but how a lot of things are happening in the East. A lot of people are too continuous and too like focused on the West, West side. She wanted to tell a lot of people、uh, about it in the East. So that's I think that's why she wrote it,、uh, the original version in English. And yeah, there are translated books of it in the world. And she did start writing. She did. Now let's look at some history fun facts of Pachinko. She immediately started writing it when the Berlin, the Great Berlin Wall fell down, which is so ungreat. And she and one day she was at a book club and she wrote. She started saying Pachinko on the thirtieth anniversary. City of anniversary of the fall of the Berlin Wall, yeah, everything like that,、mm, and everything just like that happened there. Minjin Lee also talked a lot about,、uh, also put some lectures on a lot loads of universities, and she became more more famous when she wrote Pachinko. Her other books,、um, Goyang slash Hometown. And Motherland were all nice and all, but Pachinko became the world's wide bestseller. She was. This was the whole series, and I'm thinking that there might be a fourth book coming up, but I really regret that. If there really was a fourth book, I'd rather see you type down suggestions in the comments below. This whole book, people try. Ninja Lee's, I think, tried to show people about how everything happens and what racism isn't just about blacks. It's just about like Asians, yellowish people, and yeah, it does include blacks and whites and all that stuff. But we also have to, we also has to like put in some discrimination, not only just in the West. But we also have to focus on the East. Both sides might be equal. All races are equal, no matter what their skin color is. Inside, we are the same. We have all the same type of lungs,、uh, not the same type of blood, but we do have one thing in common. Here's my reasoning why every I think everybody is related to each other, even if they are、uh, don't have the same family names or the same family traditions. The first man appears here. There are loads of men. Just one man who appears, and then the first woman was born. They start to do a little bit of sexy stuff, schooly pooping, and then, 
and then they also then they get babies. Those babies make more babies, which might make more and more populations. And all those babies multiply and multiply, and each baby makes loads and loads of species. Probably brothers and sisters make, and slowly, slowly they start to they start to evolve, and then. Well, since our species of humans are the only species of humans that are survived, and that our ancestors kind of lived with alien humans, we were the only survivors, and probably we kind of had some sex. Some some people might have had some sex with other people. So, some some kinds of bloods of Neanderthals and all those people must have, you know, must have done stuff. Must have done stuff that was. You know, really getting some Neanderthal blood in us. Now we might have some Neanderthal blood in us, like having the strength and all that stuff. And that's why I think everybody. This is my theory that everybody is related to each other, no matter what they are. Even if they are different nations from different nations, different blood types. Like if they're mixed together, everybody is the same. If including if they're Chinese or Japanese, they're the same. That's my theory. That's my theory. This might be sounding very surprising to you and very unaccepted to you, but I highly do this in my own. Now I may be a kid, but I may be smart. I may be a kid, but I am smart. And yeah, how do I feel about this? Well, I have to say that well, it's like having loads of mixtures of stuff. Mixed together,、uh, having some discrimination into my anger place, and then having the non-discrimination and the protest into my happier moments. I might support the protest if I was living near one of the protests, but no, I I won't. Literally, Black Lives Movement might matter to me, and also probably some other discriminations and some protests in the East too, and some mixture mixtures of people. I support. I will support all of these, all of these protests. That doesn't mean I'll be part of them. Anger and happiness kind of mix between me when I think of these, and they might not be the ways I think of it. Mixed feelings are very often here, and I have to say they're just normal. So yeah, that's how I want to end this video with. My conclusion of this video is that there are loads of discrimination in the world, both west and the east, and that we should focus on both of them. We mainly focus on the west, but we should also focus on the east. We might have mixed feelings about it. So, what are your feelings about the discrimination, racism, things? And write them in the comments below. And I'll see you in the next episode. Jinhan out.